Hello everyone. Today we are going to be going on the 2023 Minnesota State Fair history walking tour. I was here at the fair a few days back and I saw these uh, pamphlets with a couple little signs throughout the fair and thought it could be a fun, different thing to do for the channel. Take everybody on a walk through the Minnesota State Fair history walking tour. There are 12 stops and we will start here at the Compier Arena. It is very hot today. I will try to stay in the shade as much as possible to prevent my phone from overheating. This is stop number two. We will go uh, from stop two all the way around to end at stop number one. This is the judging arena. The original was built in 1964, but this new arena, Compier Arena, was uh, replaced and built in 2012. It was a 15,000 square foot structure that was added to the livestock area for additional judging and stalling facilities. This one that we're looking at now is an even larger arena. Now known as Compier Arena, depending on the day you can see cattle, horses, llamas, and more, or even a lively 4-H livestock option. Auction. So there's, on each of these signs, there's a little information. And then within the pamphlet, you can see slightly different information. There's an image of someone in there with a kid and a horse. There's a little more information inside the pamphlet. Um, there's a llama costume contest that actually goes on here throughout the fair one night. I think that was on Wednesday night. So as you walk through the tour, you are to punch each stop. And then once you reach eight, you're eligible for a prize at a few of these locations. So we're gonna punch these as we go. This is stop number two. We're gonna punch there. And then we'll go look inside the arena and continue our walk. Oh, there's a kid on a horse. So this is that Compier Arena, the new judging arena built in 2012. There was a best of show event this morning. Here's the map. We are starting right here at stop number two. We're gonna walk along this main drag of the fair, go up to four, five, up around this way, and then come back down and at stop number one and the history center. You know, yesterday I did try to do a stream and was having some issues with the phone overheating. It is similarly as hot today. So hopefully we will have good luck today. Thank you for joining. And let's continue this walk. I believe our next stop is gonna be stop number four. Because of the excessive heat the last couple days, it's a, there's a sign here saying, sorry, most livestock went home last night when temps were cooler. So it looks like they have started clearing out the livestock early. But the humans are still here having a great time. Going on here. Another 
cheese carving? The big cheese carving contest. Cattle barn, this brick structure with the bridge arches is, I think, my second favorite building here at the State Fair. But it is not part of the history tour, so I don't have too much information to share on it. walking along what is kind of the main drag of the, the state fair. Today is the last day, so I believe some food vendors start running out of stuff throughout the day. Some of the items for sale start to run out. And then, as we heard a few moments ago, some of the animals have already gone home. So the state fair is winding down for this year. I think it's been great. I was walking up here a little earlier and this main drag is pretty packed. I would not be surprised to see that the Labor Day, final day of the State Fair attendance record is broken today. When they there, but the full attendance numbers for the fair will be up tomorrow. into the thick of the heat and the crowd. I use a slightly different route to arrive to the fair today. Uh, in the past, I have oftentimes come really early in the morning, around 8 a.m., 7.30 a.m., and grabbed coffee, walked around the fair before the crowds get here when you can easily park in the neighborhoods in the area. Other times when I'm coming in the evening, I've used the park and ride. Today, I parked over in the Midway neighborhood of St. Paul and rented a scooter and rode that scooter up here to uh, the entrance of the state fair. I was able to walk in without any real issue. Very convenient, I think the ride cost about $4 or something like that. Cool option if you don't have a bunch of kids to manage. Up there at the DNR building. Overheating issues. But thank you everybody who is tuning in and watching. Yesterday there was some audio issues. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Battery charging issues. Let's see if there are people in the chat. The stream is not showing me the chat at the moment. Oh, there it is. I just sent a message. Hi, everyone. 
just to see if I was getting the chats. Oh, I'm getting distracted. I'm just band playing. Shanghai Henry's, home of the crispy Ludicrous steam bun. If they bring back that back next year, I highly recommend not trying it. Probably the most foul thing I've ever eaten at the State Fair, and I think most of the people I've <laughs> spoken to feel the same way. Unfortunately, they only serve it in uh, sets of four. So when you go to that Shanghai Henry's and get the Ludicrous stinky fish steam bun, you're going to get four buns. All right, you can see the sign up ahead. We're coming up on our next stop of the walking tour. Hey! <laughs> So we're coming up here on stop number four of the Minnesota State Fair history walking tour. This is the J.B. Bailey House. It was built in 1911 and it was restored in 2006. There's the sign. We will go get our stamp in a moment. So let's go take a look at the house and I will read what the pamphlet is telling us about it. There is the J.V. Bailey House. Built in 1904, a hospital and first aid station was built southeast of the grandstand. This building remained there until the end of summer of 1911 when it was moved and extensively remodeled to become officers' quarters. The fair time home for members of the state fair board who lived outside the Twin Cities. From 1916 through 2004, the State Fair's Green Thumbs planted themselves, I think there's a little pun there, as this American four square style home became the year round home to the greenhouse superintendents and groundkeepers. They washed over the greenhouse and took care of the iconic canaz, the beautiful red and yellow flowering tropical plants can be found by the thousands throughout the fairgrounds. In 2006, the house was named for J.B. Bailey, founder of Bailey Nurseries, Agricultural Society, Superintendent of Horticulture, and State Fair Board member from 1924 to 1934. Since 2006, the Bailey House has become home to the Minnesota State Fair Foundation, which is a 501c3 charity celebrating its 20th anniversary in 2022 have to drink alcohol this year, it's 21 now. The foundation has provided the State Fair with over 16 million for preservation and improvements to the fairgrounds and State Fair buildings, and in support of the fair's educational programs. And the JV uh, Bailey House is one of the spots where if you do complete the walking tour, you can go and talk to the nice volunteers here and they'll give you the prize, which we will get later in the video but at one of the different locations. So all these people from throughout the state who did not have places to stay when they would be coming to work the fair, used to stay in that house, as well as in the former location of the house, which was by the grandstand. All right, we're gonna uh, punch this next one and then continue on our way. windy <laughs> all right stop number four and they do have unique notches so don't try to game the system and cheat 
at the Minnesota Historical Society State Fair walking tour, because they'll know. And your shame will be like no shame you've ever felt before. So I'm able to see what I wrote in the chat, but I haven't seen anything from anyone else. If you are speaking in the chat, I apologize, but it looks like I'm unable to hear you at the moment. So if you are out there in the chat, thank you for watching. And I apologize that I can't see the insightful things that I'm sure you are sharing. So this is stop number five of the walking tour. This is the Fan Shell, built in 1971. In the early years, if you wanted to see a band perform, it was often on smaller stages within a building. By the 1960s, live entertainment had expanded to new outdoor themed areas. In 1971, the Fan Shell was built. The largest of the free entertainment stages. People spilled out on the street to watch the performers. And the street that separated the Space Tower and Fan Shell was filled in, cheering them up. They're celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Here is the image from the pamphlet. Oh, we got the same image on both. It's no fun. Our show will get underway in just a few minutes. So come on in and grab a seat. All right, I'm going to set you down while I punch off this spot. That is spot number five. We are going to head up to stop number six. says here that if you complete eight of the stops, you will earn a prize. This walk is two miles long, and you can start your tour at any of the stops. Looking at the, uh, the pamphlet here, use the map on the last page of this brochure to find your way, and you can use the punch at each stop to punch the corresponding number in your brochure. Complete eight stops to collect a free prize, plus the added bonus of walking approximately two miles. bridge there in St. Paul that I walk across. We will see all that. We're coming up on stop number six of our history tour. Creative activities built art, music, and housekeeping it, homemaking. So we are back and sitting here by the pickle pizza. We are about four stops into the Minnesota State Fair history walking tour. The um, previous stream cut out right Activities completely cut out. Likely. Alright, we are headed towards stop number 8 
on the history walking tour. Sorry to everyone who was cut out there. Um, as I was saying previously, the, uh, we went into that creative activities building to try to show some of the different crafts and baked goods and things that people have made. It ended up at number eight on the Minnesota State Fair history tour. This block was previously home to Machinery Hill, which is where all the uh, different like, tractors and machines are in the early 1900s and later poultry starting in 1928. It was replaced by this landscape park in 1940. Today there is educational programming. It was added in the 2010s and is now a name to honor, honor Doug Baldwin, the State Fair's general manager from 1952 to 1962. John Boat there, which is that 4-H building that's right over here. All right, so we got stop number eight punched. We now have five total, three more to be eligible for the prize, but we're going for the full 12. One mile in length, livelier than the parades of the past. Child. So this is not 10, which I believe is machinery row. Follow the beat. So we are continuing on the walk past the little farm. All right, so we are going to continue the video. Um, I'm just gonna record it here without the live and then I will connect this with the other two live videos. And then hopefully have one long video of all three that you can watch and enjoy. But right now we are at stop number 10 of the Minnesota Historical Society History Walking Tour. This is Machinery Hill, coined in 1909. At that time, farm implements have been part of the state fair since it's the beginning. In 1907, an additional 40 acres were added to the north end of the fair fairgrounds, principally for farm machinery displays and the name Machinery Hill was coined in 1909. In its prime, nearly 80 acres of the fairgrounds were used for farm implements and vehicles that gave visitors a glimpse into the future of farming. Countless kids and kids at heart were in awe of the giant tractors and combines. Now, as the demographics have changed and vendors have changed, new agricultural and industrial equipment still finds a home on Machinery Hill, but on a much smaller scale. Today's farm equipment still finds a home on Machinery Hill, but on a, so today's farm equipment manufacturers rarely bring their products to public expeditions, but instead build them to order. The old iron show celebrates antique farm machinery, a nod to what once was. The hill also features the little farm hand exhibit, which is a fun place for kids to learn about agricultural from the field to the grocery store. And we will get our stamp here for number 10. that walking tour Thank <laughs> you. 
felt like they were about to part ways for me, standing on either side. It felt like some sort of a king. Right, here's the uh, Sky Glide. I think the Sky Glider, Sky Rider. This is the glider. And the larger person must sit on the inside of the chair. One of the right attendants instructions at all times. When the chair approaches you, sit down and lean back. Do you want to have an answer to all the right Stop number 11 coming up ahead. Oh, I passed it. Over there. So this is stop 11, which is the Farm Boys Camp. In 1912, 84 boys from about two, from all but two counties of the state earned a trip to the state fair via the Farm Boys Camp. They were chosen by submitting essays about our farm home and then received free transportation, food, lod and lodging. In return, there were ushers at the grandstand and hippodrome events. For many, this was their first time out of their county, their first train ride, or their first streetcar sighting. In 1916, a carriage building was transformed into a permanent home for the farm boys, and a new building was erected on the northeast corner of the fairgrounds. In 1941, a girls' camp began in 1916, and they stayed in the dormitories at the neighboring State Agricultural College. In 1953, a new dormitory facilities were added to the Farm Boys Camp building, enabling girls to stay on the fairgrounds as well. In 1975, it was renamed Youth Camp and continued through 1993. The building was raised prior to the 2000 State Fair and the North End Event Center, built in 2019, now resides in this space. Although the physical youth camp is no more, the present still lives on. In 1994, it turned into a scholarship where 20 or more youth per year are awarded $1,000 each to continue agricultural education. Let's punch the Farm Boys Camp stop of the walking tour. All right, so that's stop number 11. Now we are headed towards the Pet Pavilion for what will be stop number 12 of the tour. Thank you everybody for watching today. I hope you're all having a great afternoon. It is a gorgeous day here in Minnesota, Labor Day 2023 the final day of the Minnesota State Fair. So this is a part of the fair that I actually had never visited and I actually learned about through this, uh, entirely learned about entirely through this history walking tour that was put together. So just showing its use in action. Pets at the Fair began in 1912. In 1912, the State Fair held its first bench show, featuring 56 exhibitors with 95 dogs. But if you wanted to see your favorite pooches, you would have to pay a special admission. This lasted through 1916, and not until the late 30s did puppy and sometimes cat shows return, held in the Poultry Building. In 1972, dogs moved to the dog exhibit building west of the grandstand. And in 1991, the pet center on the north end of the fairgrounds opened up to purebred dog breeders. Exhibitions, commercial displays, veterinary groups, and more. Now in 2018, the pet pavilions opened west of the former pet center. Open air booths house man's best friend with different breeds making appearances throughout the fair. Spay and neuter surgeries are performed on A lines and B lines while a narrator explains the procedures to onlookers. A neighboring structure is filled with pet centric items and an outdoor area showcases the agility and obedience during demonstrations. Let's punch 
stop number 12 and let's go see some dogs. History Center, where we will get our final punch. Well, we still have three left, but that's the route we're going on. And then see what our prize is. road from stop number 12 all the way up to stop number seven there so gonna be a couple minutes probably about the distance of the sky glider walking by that farm hands and machinery hill uh, stop that we saw earlier and then heading this way as we wrap up the final few stops but these final few stops are each the furthest apart, so still some time. some of that 90 plus degree heat that we're dealing with here today at the fair. Yeah, I would like to once again share my guess that today will break the record for Memorial Day attendance at the fair. And I'll be very surprised because I think 
the record was not too crazy in compared to somehow the other days are. So this feels like a pretty crowded day. So we'll see. by the Kidway on the left, some uh, tractors on the right, lawn mowers. The exhibits have gone from those more industrial agriculture to more home use based products. of children on the Kinway rides. <laughs> the swings were a little more intense than they expected, I guess. of the uh, History Tour walking tour. Fairborn and Fairchild are not out here today. Or at the moment, probably getting ready for the parade coming up. But Fairborn was born in 1983. Saved Fair's second Gopher mascot. There's the two of them. Joined Fair Scott, the official mascot since 1966. Fairchild and Fairborn can be met during their daily appearances at Visitor's Plaza, which is this place right here. We'll wait for them during the daily parade. Don't forget to wish Fairborn a happy 40th birthday. Born in 1983 and it is 2023. Let's uh, punch this stop. Got stop number seven. All we have left are three and one, which three is going to be the DNR building, and then one is going to be uh, right there at the History Center, which I think in the main entrance where you get off your parking ride and everything. It's going to be, we'll see what that one's about.
Resources Park by the Minnesota DNR. Oh. Gotta keep your head on a swivel at the fair. You never know when you'll get plowed over. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here we are at stop number three of the DNR building, built in 1934. In the early 1900s, an aquarium full of live native fish was added to the fair, which that aquarium is going to be uh, the new, the current versions on the other side there. However, the popular exhibit did not have a permanent location until 1934 when the Department of Conservation log cabin was built by the Emergency Leave Administration, which was the precursor to the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. Visitors could also see wolves, coyotes, and bears there. When the name changed to the Department of Natural Resources, building in 1971, the fair revitalized the exhibit, turning the formal South Lawn Garden and Fountain into wetlands and a mesmerizing pond featuring approximately 40 native Minnesota fish species. Inside the building, there are 17 small aquariums that once featured individual species, were replaced in 2013 with five larger tanks featuring the state's diverse aquatic habitats. Now, each year, the exhibit informs over 500,000 guests about stewardship of our state's natural resources in the areas of outdoor recreation, conservation, and sustainable commercial use. Current topics include wildflower identification, hunting regulations, protection against invasive species, and wildfire safety with the one and only Smokey the Bear. Got the images in here are the same as that are up here or a photo of the conservation building inside here. Someone with the kid exploring the fair. It's tired. This kid's probably wearing her up. Long day at the fair. Set you down for a minute. While I punch stop number three. All right, so we got all but stop number one. We're gonna go uh, get those. Let's go take a look at the pond and then walk over to stop number one. And then I will call it a day. See what our prize is. Yeah. 
Got it. Got pins. Keep giving those away at the door here. This might be one of the least crowded times I've ever seen the fish exhibit here. Typically, whoa, we got a jumper. Fish Pond, International Wolf Center. I think that's up in Ely. And then this is the Minnesota Historical Society here. You want to come say hi to them when you're at the fair. I got to get the last stop so I can get all 12. But must stop booth right here. Come say hi. <laughs> hey. Oh, TV here. <laughs> no, it's so that was the Minnesota Historical Society who puts together the uh, State Fair History Walking Tour. One of the places where you can go to get your prize. This is the DNR uh, Tower. You can hike up that to get some elevated views of the fair. Uh, nice free alternative to riding a Ferris wheel or something like that, or like the sky ride. That music is loud and we'll see if it uh, gets my video flagged. Group. Well, once again, thank you all for watching the video. If you made it this far, uh, I'd love to have you like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with anyone who you think might be interested in Minnesota, the Minnesota State Fair, etc. This year, this is the Frontier, this place, Frontier Cafe, I don't know, Frontier, cold beer on tap. So uh, this place, a little, well, Timmy Tidbit, we'll call it. <laughs> this seltzer slushy right there is a, right here, that is a, God tier Minnesota State Fair beverage. You go in there and you get the, I think it was mango seltzer slushy, and it is made by Fulton. And it is this just delicious, tastes like an icy, uh, very dangerous, because I could see kids drinking something like that without being able to taste the alcohol in it, but incredibly refreshing, tasty, but without because it's that seltzer flavored slushy, it doesn't have that sweetness of a regular slushy or like some of the wine and beer garitas that you get throughout the fair that are just incredibly sweet. It is a fantastic drink and I highly recommend it here when you're at the fair. You see me at the fair or you are at the fair, Feel free to buy one and raise the glass. Cheers. But by the time this video is up, the fair will be over for 2023. Maybe you'll be watching in the next couple of weeks, uh, sharing your excitement of what you got to see this year. Or maybe you'll be moving on and watching a week before the 2024 State Fair. But whenever you are watching, thank you. I appreciate you. Here's the Sky Ride. Very fun exhibit to go ride across the fair. And we're heading towards the main entrance.
and this will be I <laughs> we got history walking tour stop number one up ahead which will mean we have completed the two mile walk and all 12 stops then we'll go into the history center to get our prize this is where you exit to get on and off the park and ride probably the most common way for at least me to get to and from the fair this is Minnesota State Fair history walking tour stop number one. The one mile track was once here. Constructed in 1885, removed 1939, a one mile dirt track for horses was built in 1885, which included speed barns for race horses, including the standard breed stallion, Dan Patch. Standard bred stallion, Dan Patch. After the 1935 fair, the one mile track was replaced with a half mile track. The Transit Hub, Randall Avenue, and West End Market are on the same site as the former track and barns. Some more. That's the judging arena, but there's an image from the fair. It's the same one there. And that's the grandstand. Got them all. All right. So that is a very fun thing to do here at the fair. If you enjoy history and are just looking to have a way to walk around the fair without it being so much just focused on food and consumption, which is obviously a fantastic time and a great way to enjoy the fair, or just to take a different approach to it. So thank you all for coming along with me today. Today we're gonna now we're gonna go inside the Heritage Center and see if they will give us a prize. This is the museum here. All sorts of interesting stuff about the Minnesota State Fair history. Also a great spot to cool off. And then we're gonna go Hello. We did it. Completed. So we have a choice this year. Oh, a choice this yes. year. Either this is a kite. We got a kite. This is a and a badge, a blue and, ribbon, and a stick. And a and stick. And you can put this on With a pennant on it. Yes. So a choice of any of the three. Yeah. Hmm. Have a good day. Yeah, have a good day, sir. Let's see. That's it. I think uh, I will go with the I'm a winner blue ribbon. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for putting this together. Very fun. That about wraps up what we were looking to do here. So thank you everybody for coming along. If you came along and watched the whole video, if I'm a winner, you're a winner too. So thank you for coming along. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, I appreciate you watching. Take care.